welcome to the S.A. Hirsch multimedia production of our pre-election show, live from the Can TV studios. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know that this program is brought to you in part by eVoter. eVoter is proud to be a, spar a sponsor of this um, election special. And one of the few times you're going to see me on a show without Marty Levinson, but hi, Marty, we hope you're doing well. I'm your host, Avi Myers, and I've got a co-host, as I do for all the live election shows other than the last one, where he was in Boston for a family wedding. And of course, they had a Chicago's leading election lawyer, Jim Nally. Jim, how you doing? I'm doing great, and it's always great to be together <laughs> with you, Avi. It's my pleasure, and um, you know we have an audience today, Alita Nally, and how you doing? And we <laughs> hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, we want to let all of you know, oh, oh, and by the way, of course, this is an S.I. Hirsch multimedia special, and um, you know, Keith is definitely, uh, he's always there before us and, and helping us, and uh, we, we thank him very much. Uh, we're going to have four guests calling in today. We're not going to take calls from the general public. Um, the four guests are going to be uh, the president of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, Terry O'Brien, and the second guest, who was running, of course, for president of the Cook County Board. The second guest is going to be Judge Michael Bender, who's running for the Ninth Sub-Circuit Vacancy A. Uh, the third guest is going to be Joseph Berrios, mm -hmm. who's running for the Cook County Assessor. And the fourth guest is going to be Lieutenant Governor candidate Scott Lee Cohn. Jim, um, let's talk about Terry a little bit before he calls in. So, um, I, you know, we, we both, it's no secret that both of us are big fans. Yeah, well, we've known Terry. Of course, he, uh, he's a Rogers Park guy. We all grew up in the same neighborhood together. And, uh, you know, you, you really, over the years, you get to know somebody. And, and this is the type of person that over all those years, he's been one of the steadiest people I've ever known. Um, what he says to you, you can count on. Uh, he's worked one of the, I, I don't know anybody who works harder. I mean, Terry on this campaign is up at five in the morning out of train stops and he doesn't stop till 11 o'clock or midnight at night. You know, one of my favorite comments is from an old time politician who, uh, who told me that, you know, Terry's not like the rest of them. <laughs> and, and I said, what do you mean by that? He says, oh, well, he surprises people. When he says he's going to do something, he actually does it. <laughs> So, and, and that's the way he is. He, he really does, you know, follow through with these things. Absolutely. And uh, speak of the devil, well, actually, in this case, the angel, or maybe the uh, poster boy for good government in Cook County, as far as I'm concerned, it is my pleasure to welcome the next president of the Cook County Board, Terry O'Brien. How are you? Good morning, Avi. Good morning, Jim. Morning, Terry. How are you guys this morning? We're doing great. Good, good. So, uh, busy campaign day, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, we're just uh, leaving a church right here on the north side, heading off to our next event. So, it's been busy, it's been good. People are very positive about the campaign that we're running and uh, getting tremendous feedback from all corners of the county. Well, there's definitely momentum on your side. The last poll showed a definite uh, major increase on your part. And I, you know what? I don't think everything's reflected in the poll, and I think that increase is going to keep on happening from now till Election Day. Yeah, we, you know... Well, we respect the pollsters, but uh, believe me, when it comes down to Election Day, it's not the polls that vote, it's the people. And that's what we're doing is reaching out to, to all the communities across the county, as we always have when we run for uh, election at the Water Reclamation District. And we're doing the same here with uh, this race for Cook County Board President. Let's talk about some of the things you want to do when you become president of the Cook County Board. Well, the first thing, Avi, I want to do, and I'm the only one that wants to do it immediately, is roll back that regressive sales tax, that 1%. It has just had a uh, tremendous impact on industry and commercial people here in uh, Cook County. Uh, we picked up the endorsement of the Chicago Chamberland, uh, Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce this week uh, because of the fact that uh, what we've talked to them about uh, is a business-friendly attitude and changing the attitude here in Cook County uh, to make it more business-friendly, to attract, uh, you know, to keep the companies that are actually here and to attract new businesses here so that we can create uh, more jobs for the people that live here. Yeah, it's a definite problem because if, if you're going to buy a car or, or even a TV set, a 1% extra on the sales tax, even a half a percent, is substantial enough money that, that it, it, anybody who's near... Well, go ahead. It, it's, it's a major uh, major hit to people in their, in their wallets. Uh, you know, there was an article in the Southtown Star last week uh, right in the southern, southern suburbs, and uh, the headline of the article is, Will County Loves Todd Stroger. And uh, it talked about... Uh, Two of the businesses over there, talk, they were talking to them, and they said since this sales tax was implemented, their business has skyrocketed 
And there's no reason why that fishing shouldn't be just staying here in Cook County. No, absolutely. I know myself right now, and even though I like to stay loyal and all the rest of it, if, if I, when I was near the Lakewood, Lake Cook border when I was delivering papers, um, oh, and by the way, Jewish Chicago, I, which I print in my spare time, um, available free on newsstands everywhere. And as a matter of fact, this handsome devil over here is also that guy on the other side of the screen. So, uh, you know, and there's, it's no secret. We've got pictures of all four candidates on the cover. But it's no secret at this point to everybody that we strongly endorse Terry O'Brien, and, and I feel it's about as important a race as there is. And I really appreciate that endorsement. It means a lot to my candidacy and our campaign. Well, you know, I, I, th I think it's a matter of trying to do, do the best thing for the people of Cook County. I mean, you know, people don't realize what you've been able to accomplish at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District and the improvements well, that have been made there since you've been on. We've treated the people's money like it's our own money at the Water Reclamation District. We, uh, we refunded $56 million back to the taxpayers in 2008, which is uh, some very difficult or tough economic times here. So, and we're proud of what we've done there. And just going back to 1991, two, over $247 million. Uh, plus our status with the bond rating agencies, we carry a AAA bond rating. Uh, we hire people for what they know, not who they know. And uh, since I was elected first obvious in 1988, uh, and now in 2010, we've had a 30% reduction in our workforce. And um, <clears throat> while taking on an added responsibility, which was that of the county board and that stormwater management. So you're actually doing more. And doing I think more with less. With less. And, and actually have, have repeatedly rebated um, money back to the people of Cook County. And that's not to mention the fact that uh, you are the only governmental agency within who knows how far from here, anywhere near this area, with a AAA bond rating. That's correct. And, we're, and you know, we, we manage the fourth largest governmental agency here in uh, the state of Illinois, unlike uh, my opponents, one who manages an aldermanic office, another one the clerk of the circuit courts, and then uh, I guess we know what the management style is of, of the current president. Um, <laughs> very poor. <laughs> Not just very, well, you know what, I, I have to say, you know, I've interviewed, I've had all four candidates on the show. All four have done hi on Marty Levinson. Welcome to the North yeah. Town News Magazine. And Todd did a very nice one. He's a very nice guy, but he's in so far over his head, it's not even funny. You know, the funny thing is, the person that bothers me the most in this campaign is Tony Preckwinkle. Because, well, you know, first of all, she's an alderman, and are we going to replace uh, a city, uh, an alderman with another alderman? And uh, she talks about how she wants to repeal the tax, sales tax. And from day one, she was talking about how she was going to do it over a four-year period. Now, all of a sudden, she's flipped on her decision, and she's talking about doing it uh, immediately. Uh, one of the other things is she's, you know, never passed up a tax or never met a tax that she hasn't liked. Uh, just here in 2000, December of 2009, she co-sponsored a resolution from the city council to the General Assembly to increase personal income tax by 66%. In 2008, she approved or voted to approve a 40% real estate transfer tax. Wow. And going back to 2005, she <clears throat> voted for a dozen, sales, dozen taxes and fees, which totaled uh, $85 million. And that included a sales tax increase in the city, as well as a hotel tax, amusement tax, restaurant tax. So um, I don't know where she comes off saying that she's going to repeal this tax when she's uh, done nothing but vote for taxes. Well, she's not only, and by the way, in the, in the meantime, while you're actually saving money, jobs, and through, through it, not through firing or layoffs, this no. is through natural attrition that you've done these things. Well, we're not only saving money, but we're, we have the decency to give that money back to the taxpayers, unlike taking that additional revenue and spending on something that might be frivolous. Yeah, which most government agencies will do. You know, on top of there, too, when it comes to Preckwinkle, and, and it really does bother me because, you know, so often the white, the person that appears to be the white knight crusader type, you, you know, really is guilty of all the sins that they're accusing other people of. Sometimes it well, takes one to know one. Well, she, she, she claims herself to be a reformer, a progressive, independent Democrat. Well, you know, as I said the other night on uh, Channel 11, I said, She's one of the reasons why we have Todd Stroger today. I mean, she's a committeeman. She had a vote in that process. And she was the one that I think was basically lobbying a lot of people to make sure he, he received that position. 
So no, she's part of the problem. She's definitely part of the problem, not to mention the fact that, you know, for, for people who think they're getting a reformer, when they're getting her, when, when she thought that there was a chance that Mayor Daley would support her, all of a sudden, somebody who's been against the city budget all the years is for the city budget. She voted for the city, Olympics. City budget and Olympics, that's correct, Abby. You're yeah, correct. She, You're right on with that. You know, there are so many people in politics. That, as a matter of fact, people don't realize, you, are, you came in as an independent. Not even your ward committeeman backed you. That's right. In 1988, I ran as an independent Democrat and, and beat what the, the current alderman uh, likes to say, the machine. So, um, and we've worked every uh, campaign ever since uh, on our own as well. So we're proud of our record and proud that we can stand by ourselves and make, you know, make hard decisions. And, and the fact of the matter is, even though you've made a lot, see, people mistake making friends with not having independence. Exactly, exactly. You, but, you, uh, and the thing that we've done well is we've worked with, uh, you know, I've got a very diverse board, and we work very well with that board. Uh, I've had to work with the General Assembly because the water rec is a creature of the General Assembly. So we have to get legislation passed through there. I mean, and I've worked with both sides of the aisles, uh, the different caucuses that are down there. We've also gone to Washington to secure federal dollars to bring home for our tunnel and reservoir project. I think almost a billion dollars dating back to 1988 since we've been there that we brought home from uh, from Washington. So, uh, and that's something that the county, they've got to start looking at as trying to get and secure uh, federal dollars and grants to uh, to help the operations here. And you have to know how to work with people, and it's something you know how to do. Well, you got to be not only work with people, but you got to be willing to do the paperwork and, and the grunt work to get it done. And uh, I think there's a, there's a lack of uh, incentive there right now as far as uh, trying to do those things. But those will change under my administration. Yeah, and not to mention the fact that you have serious administrative experience. Miss um, Preckwinkle has, what, eight employees in the alderman's office? I don't know what she's got, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not, not the size of the water wreck. No, not even close. Uh, not even close. It's not exactly administrative experience. And, uh, but uh, so um, let's talk about, you know, you were talking about different things to, 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 to save money within Cook County once you become president. Well, there's, there's a lot of duplications uh, that we find over there. Um, one of them is the, the Board of Elections. I mean, why do we need two Board of Elections, city and, and county? That can be all rolled into one. And they even receive federal dollars for elections. So um, that would cut costs there. Another thing is to consolidate the purchasing operations in county government. Uh, it's why does each department need a purchasing person? Uh, those should all be brought into one area. That way you... Uh, you break up some of the friendships that might have developed over the years that uh, end up with sweetheart deals in those particular departments. I think you have better control if you have it all under one department. I mean, we've got nine departments in the Water Reclamation District. One of those departments is a procurement department, and then we have other eight other operating departments that feeds into that procurement department as far as uh, sending out contracts for competitive bid. Now, let's, now, for the hospital, what about the independent uh, advisory board or whatever? Well, I've, I've been saying all along I'm, I'm in favor of the permanency of that independent board, but I think there needs to be an evaluation done before their term comes to completion here just to see what they've done and to make sure that they're accountable to somebody, whether it's the board commissioners here or it's the taxpayers. There has to be accountability. You know, I've sat on boards uh, all my life, and I've seen some of these boards go from small uh, regular boards to empires, and uh, it's because they're, they're not accountable to anybody, and uh, they need to be accountable to somebody. Just uh, history, I think, uh, shows that, you know, back in uh, 1969, uh, the county's health care system was in jeopardy of losing their accreditation. Uh, they developed an independent board back then. And there was nine members on that particular board. I think two were appointed by the president uh, to that board. But then, you know, they, again, started out very well, like the current, you know, system that is in place. But then they started running into difficulties in 1975 when their doctors went out on strike. And then in 1977 when the nurses went out on strike. And then they actually uh, ended up with an $80 million deficit back then. So everything then would revert it back to the county board at that time. Uh, and I think because, again, the accountability issue to the taxpayers of this county. Now, what can you do to either bring in more revenue or um, 
you know, or, or to cut back within the hospital itself because if you roll, when you roll back the sales tax, there's X amount of money that's not coming in. Well, uh, but is that sales tax actually being used for the health care system or is it being used for uh, Todd Stroger's hiring uh, fund? <laughs> um, I mean, that's, you know, he said he was going to put a freeze on hiring, but uh, yet he continues to hire people. He's filling positions that have been vacant for, for six years now, Avi. And anybody who runs a business or has been in business knows that your biggest costs in a business are personnel costs, salary, benefits, and all the other uh, entities that go with that. And, um, you know, what the county hospital has to do is a better job in making the collections on uh, the health care services that they're providing, where there is an opportunity to collect from either Medicaid or Medicare or some private insurance. They have fallen down on that, that aspect of it. Uh, they're still in the 19th century there. They're still pushing paper. They need to become, you know, technically challenged and move into the, into the 21st century here. Uh, just leaving this church function, I was talking to a lady who was saying it's, it's amazing and how many of the, the private universities that we have here locally and why nobody has tapped into those resources. And I have to agree with her. I mean, we've got some great university hospital systems here locally with the Loyola's and the University of Chicago, um, and they're not reaching out to them to get assistance to find out how they can better manage uh, their operations in county with the county health care system. But I will give uh, Bill Foley some credit. He is, he's putting his management team in place. Uh, their collections are up from, uh, up from last year by $75 million, and they also went after some federal dollars. They went after this uh, disproportionate... Uh, uh, share health care program. It's a federal program uh, for indigent care. Last year they were able to secure $200 million, which uh, reduced their dependency on the tax levy by 19%. So they're making headway over there. No, that's, it's good that you, and, and you know what, I like the fact that you recognize that these things are happening, but know how to improve on that, and I think that's very important. By the way, before I forget, the one thing I do have to say, almost any time I interview you is, hi, Kathleen, how you doing? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I know that today you've got a number of stops still to go. I know that Jim's going to see you at one of them later. Yep. And I'm Good. hoping to see you uh, later on on Peterson Avenue. Good. Good. We're going to have a big rally out on the hillside today, Abby. And then uh, next Sunday, uh, another big rally up at uh, the hall at St. Margaret Mary's. So, you know, if you're in the neighborhood, come on out and visit with us. We'd love to have you. No, it'd be my pleasure. And, uh, you, know, you know, one of the things that I just want to let people know, too, is when I go, because I've been to a number of the events that the candidates have, and, and one of the things about the crowd at Terry's events, it's a real quality crowd. You've got some very intelligent, conscientious, you know, well-meaning people there. You know, and well, we, have, we put together a very professional campaign staff, and, and along with that we've got a very core group of uh, great volunteers who have uh, devoted their time to... Uh, changing county government and making it uh, run like a business and, and not like somebody's ATM machine. No question about it. What is your punch number? My punch number is 96. 96. Well, you know, when you go to the polls, I, I would, uh, 96 is one of the first numbers I would push if I were you. Well, of course, you probably might do that, and I think Jim already voted because he's uh, <laughs> an election lawyer. But I, I want to urge all of you out there, there is as fine there is running for, for the various offices within Cook County, there is absolutely nobody better or better suited to make our county a better place to live, increase our revenue, decrease our costs than Terry O'Brien. And I urge all of you to vote for Terry O'Brien come Election Day. Thank you, Avi. Make sure all your listeners uh, tell their family and friends. We've got nine days to the, the big, big charge to victory here. So got to get out and vote because my biggest opponent mm -hmm. in this race is apathy right now. So. Um, and I appreciate your help and support, and, and James, Jim's as well. So, uh, punch 96. It's absolutely, it's your duty as a good citizen, people, to uh, punch 96. I, we got to let you go back on the campaign trail. I want to wish you a lot of luck, and uh, hopefully if I can finish editing here on time, we'll see you later today. Thank you very much, Ivy. You have a great day. You too. Talk all the best. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, boy, I, I got to say that it's a pleasure to talk to Terry. It really is. Right. <clears throat> He's got a lot of good ideas. He's very focused. Um, you can certainly see from, you know, just a short conversation with him, he's ready to hit the ground running. Yeah, he's got everything mapped out. He's got a plan. 
He knows exactly what he wants to do coming in. He's done his homework, and he's very impressive. And you know what? This always happens. We're going to spend some time talking about the various races, <laughs> but right now we've got uh, Judge Michael Bender on the phone. Good. So uh, we should say, hi, uh, Judge Bender, how are you today? Great, Abby. How are you? Thank God, pretty good. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, pleasure is mine, Abby, always. So uh, it's a little different when you're, uh, w you know what? Person running for judge, it's a whole different campaign. I, I mean, it's not like selling soap. You can't do things the other candidates do. I mean, how do you go about, uh, how do you go about the process? Abby, you know, the, the nice part about running as a judge is that I get to do what I do best, and that's um, talk about the, uh, the government service that I provide, my record that I provide. Um, and I understand what you're referring to. Judges are not allowed to uh, speak about other candidates, not, not allowed to do the things that happen in many political races, and that's fine with me because I, I enjoy good government and really do not enjoy politics. So uh, it works out okay. No, no question about it. And, uh, you know, some of the things people don't realize, a lot of the things you've been involved in, and actually I know I'm going to have to say them because he's not going to really stick up for himself that much. <laughs> but... Um, the fact is that, uh, first of all, Judge Bender, and by the way, you'll, you know, is, is how, how did I put this in the paper? Strongly and heartily endorsed by Jewish Chicago. Um, I appreciate that, Abby. Thank you. No, first of all, thank you. Uh, I mean, you have, been, you have been the personal pro bono lawyer for Simon Wiesenthal, the famous Nazi hunter. Uh, of course, you come from a very distinguished family. Um, your dad has also distinguished himself in the judicial ranks. Um, you know, you, you've, uh, you've been involved in thousands of various uh, matters and, and hundreds and hundreds of trials. Um, not to mention uh, you're a past president of the Decalogue Society and a past president of the Skokie Park District. And um, I, I know in your service, in, you know, it, it, there's, there's a phrase in Hebrew, for, for those who don't know, it's a phrase called chesed shel ames, which means doing a deed for somebody that, that's truly from the heart. And what does that refer to? That refers to a situation where, when, when you're doing a favor for somebody who passed away because you're not getting that favor back in this lifetime. And, and I know that when you were in, in a position in Skokie, um, you made sure that, that, that people got proper burials, you know, in, in the right places, that they were treated with dignity. And, um, you know, that's something that very few people would actually do. And it's something that if I didn't mention it, he wouldn't mention it. Trust me on that. <laughs> well, it's nice of you to mention, Abby. And as you say, you know, it's, uh, to me, to me, um, it's all about helping other people, and that's why I've uh, one been one. I thank everybody for letting me serve them in various capacities, and to um, had uh, uh, served in those capacities because in government you could really positively affect the lives of many people um, on a daily basis, and I'm, I've been very fortunate and have been able to do. Judge Bender, you were a practicing attorney for a long time. Uh, how does that help you in terms of now serving as a judge? It's really translated into um, making me a better judge, um, making me uh, understand what's going on in the courtrooms, understanding what's really important, and that is why are the people in the courtroom, why are they there, um, what, it, what, is, um, what needs to be corrected or uh, made better for them. And the, uh, the years of litigation experience, I, I practiced in most areas of law and litigated in most areas of law, civil, criminal, federal, state benches, juries, and um, that has translated into uh, letting me um, better provide justice for those who appear in the courtroom, which I'm fortunate enough to sit in. Another thing that a lot of people don't know about Judge Bender is that we had this horrible shooting July 4th, um, July 4th, 1999, in our neighborhood and in Skokie. That's where Coach Ricky Birdsog of Northwestern was killed by the, this horrid hate, uh, hate monger um, that was busy shooting up people of, of, of races other than his. And um, afterwards, uh, Judge Bender, of course he wasn't a judge at the time, was uh, pro bono taking the case up of these, um, of the, the victims of the crime against the hate group and Matthew Hale and basically resulted in their agreeing uh, to completely vacate this area under court order, which I think is something very important. And uh, thank God, people like that we should not be anywhere around. Period. And uh, but but thank God we're, they can't be here at all because of uh, the actions of Judge Bender. How how did you become a judge? 
Um, I was appointed by the Illinois Supreme Court to represent our ninth sub-circuit, which is where I've lived my entire life, and i um, deeply humbled by that. And um, now, on February 2nd, I'm asking uh, the residents to uh, continue to let me serve as uh, judge for the ninth sub-circuit and its seat of vacancy A. There's two, vac there's two seats up um, for election. Uh, a vacancy A is a new seat, which um, I was appointed to, and I have been the only one to hold it. I'm fortunate that 100% of the bar associations have given me positive ratings and have uh, recognized um, the hard work that I put in. Every day when I go, when I uh, step into the courtroom and represent our ninth sub-circuit, I am um, really proud to represent the ninth sub-circuit because, because uh, one, I lived here my whole life. The uh, various areas mean a lot to me. Uh, the people here are wonderful people, and, and something that's very important is the, the voters in the ninth sub-circuit are very educated. They um, read before they go in to vote. They look up bar ratings. They, um, they, they care very much about who they vote for, and um, I, I'm uh, happy about my good bar ratings because I'm confident that they will read the bar ratings and uh, will move to victory on uh, February 2nd. No, you definitely have a, a great set of bar ratings. Also, a, a number of endorsements besides for Jewish Chicago, which, by the way, is available free throughout Chicago. It's already gone in a lot of places, so if you haven't gotten your copy yet, you can always go to the web at uh, www.ntnm.org, which is our show site, and click on the Jewish Chicago link. And um, the entire edition there is in PDF format, and you can read the entire thing. Um, you know, one, one of the few things the Tribune did that I approved of this election is, is they got behind you, too, because, frankly, it's, you are just such a popular and obvious choice in this election. I don't know how anybody can't get behind you. Well, it's really kind of you to say, Abby. I, I, I try really, really hard, and, and again, um, the endorsements uh, that I received, um, uh, Chicago Firefighters Union, the Fraternal Order of Police, Chicago Federation of Labor, Illinois Committee for Honest Government, the Chicago Tribune, Jewish Chicago, um, uh, the um, Hellenic Voters of America, the Indo-American Democratic Organization, the Italian-American Political Coalition. I'm, I'm just very humbled um, of, those, of those endorsements, and uh, I, uh, I, I vow to continue to, on a daily basis, pursue justice for the uh, people who appear in the courtrooms, uh, of which I'm fortunate to sit in. No, I think that's terrific. What parts of Chicago are, um, are, are in the Ninth Sub-Circuit? Um, the Ninth Sub-Circuit uh, runs um, all the way through the 50th Ward, uh, 49th Ward, which includes uh, Rogers Park, West Rogers Park. So it goes up into Skokie and Evanston, Lincolnwood, Morton Grove, Wilmette, Glenview, Golf, Northfield, Niles, uh, once again, a very, very educated electorate. Uh, the voters know who they're voting for and uh, research and research um, the readings. And um, very, I'm just very, very proud to, to uh, represent that area. For those of you living in the Ninth Sub-Circuit, we urge you to punch number 196 for Judge Michael Bender running for the Ninth Sub-Circuit Vacancy A. We thank you very much for joining us and wish you good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, and um, best of luck in the coming election. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, we, we've had two really quality uh, people so far, Jim. Yeah, it's been a good morning. Definitely a good morning. You know what? Before we get our, our next caller, let's talk some about what other what races would you like to talk about? Well, <clears throat> obviously, I think uh, a lot of these judicial races should be looked at very carefully because, as Judge Bender just said, um, more than likely that is going to be, for most people, the...